a few weeks ago, uh, Uganda under 20 side, Uganda Ipos had a successful campaign on their debut appearance in uh, the AFCON. And here today I'm with the head coach of the team, Mole Wekwaso, for a few questions with him. Uh, coach, first of all, welcome back from uh, Mauritania. Thank you. Uh, I, I want us to start with um, the overall performance of, uh, of the team and of the camp. What did you make of uh, the overall performance of the team for its first appearance? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we thank the Almighty God because we are praying so hard and uh, we assembled the team which we knew that it could represent the country. Uh, then we went to play. Uh, surprisingly, we were the, 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 the new entrants in the tournament. We had to go and play to be the surprise team in the tournament because they didn't know much about us and, they, and we were underrated. And uh, God willing, we, 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 we thrived until we reached the finals. Despite losing um, the finals, we wanted to take the trophy, but God really helped us a lot. Uh, when leaving uh, Uganda for, for the tournament, what were the realistic uh, uh, expectations from me as the head coach, having worked with these boys for, for a while during training and uh, before we, uh, when you were in Gulo? What were the realistic chances uh, for Uganda? In fact, uh, having won uh, the Sekafa Championship uh, in November in Tanzania, we became the champions and uh, we knew, as uh, countries from East Africa, we knew we were the most underrated teams. So we thought if we could, uh, we could perform uh, up to the group, uh, to go through the groups, stages, that would have been our best performance. So we, we, wherever we could, coach, we never could talk with players. Our main emphasis was to qualify through the group. That was our main position which we really focused on. But um, when we played uh, Cameroon, the game that we lost, uh, we knew that we could make it. We got some extraordinary thinking and uh, power which really generated into our system and we thought we could make it because we saw that these are the the superpower nations in Africa but having played like that we lost one nil but we created more chances then I started uh, feeling that we can really make it up to the top. Of course uh, you used uh, a consistent backline and uh, almost a consistent midfield. Uh, I, I want us to focus a little bit on the midfield. What did you make of uh, the performance of the midfield that you preferred of uh, Bobos, uh, Isma, and uh, sometimes Sewada? What did you make of the performance of that midfield and how fluid they were throughout the tournament? Uh, technically, uh, the two Sewada and uh, Mugurusi were good, better than others, but uh, you don't need only to have people who can use the ball well in the tournament because sometimes even ball usage can make you go tired when you don't score. You need to have players who have the work rate. That's why most of the time you could see Iga Najib playing with uh, Babos and the Mugurusi or Sewada. So we wanted to balance the team to the, the team to be balanced so that it can uh, attack whereas defending perfectly. Okay. Um, of course, uh, as a local coach, uh, being the first to take the team to this uh, level of the competition, I mean, notwithstanding you've been with KCC through the Champions League and Confederation Cup, what does this uh, uh, say about you as a coach and, I mean, the future of local coaches in this country? First of all, uh, I have to thank the Almighty. It's not easy. He was there, I know. I will face coaches who are so experienced, who are aged, because uh, we played Ghana, but their coach was, four, uh, was 62. Uh, 
was called Zito. So I met a lot of coaches who were a bit experienced than me, but uh, I thank all the coaches in Uganda whom I went through their coaching career. They coached me well. Uh, there are things which I picked from them. So I made that combination of uh, the coaches' knowledge, my playing experience, and um, uh, school, which really uh, made me to, to get the licenses. I went for further studies here in Uganda, going for these CAF uh, courses. Uh, but what I really want to share with my, my coaches in Uganda is that we can, we can do this thing if we really believe in ourselves, if we can really do a lot of research, uh, if uh, really you can understand. It's very hard to play with a team which you don't know how it plays. Uh, you can't play with Cameroon without ever being played with them because you have to know their culture. Uh, those uh, West Africans, they are they have, they are really well constructed in their futures, uh, tall and huge, and they are very technical. So to play them, you, you need to know that. If you, if you go with um, an approach which is, which can't, which can't outmatch them, then it will be a very, very big problem. So I'm appealing to them to, whenever you, you're going to meet a team, you need to know the courage of your opponent, work according to what you want to achieve. And I think God can't, can't leave you alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I mean, following this success uh, of the under-20 team, uh, what does it say about uh, youth football in Uganda, first of all, and what the future looks like uh, for youth football in Uganda? First of all, I uh, have to thank the coaches of uh, the grassroots. They have really made a good job. I think it will help uh, the coaches of the national team to do their best job because they have really gone deep down to, to look for, for best talent. And I think Uganda has uh, the best, one of the, the, the best five countries now in Africa in uh, youth development. So we have to work extremely hard to see that uh, we change the, this raw material from players to the product, which uh, I think the product uh, will help the, nas the, the senior national team and these uh, youth national teams. Okay. Uh, now, uh, when approaching uh, teams like uh, Ghana, uh, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, the physical teams you have talked about. What communication or what are you telling your boys who are a little smaller in size, uh, going against tall, tall boys, tall and well-built boys? What are you telling them? How are they approaching that match? Yeah, thank you. And now, when you play a team like Cameroon, you play a team like uh, Ghana, Burkina Faso, Gambia, all those teams, they are really, really tall and hard to penetrate. What you need to concentrate much on is speed. You need to be quick, you put the ball down. Because their center of gravity is high, your center of gravity is low. So you need to play where your strong point is. And you don't allow, uh, you don't allow them to, to knock you easily. Once you're knocked, uh, scientifically, you will develop that fear and uh, you will lose your focus. And another thing which is, uh, which we need to mix the team to be balanced in, uh, is, in, is in height. Because there are things which you can't avoid naturally, like uh, set pieces. Uh, as you saw, Ghana scored us through the first goal uh, because of the height disadvantage. So we need to work on that so much because uh, not even, uh, not only our under 20 or under 17, but even the senior team and uh, in our league here, we, 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 we intend to defend set pieces very bad and we intend to lack 
uh, the balance of uh, height. Sometimes you, co you could see a short player marking a tall player because of that imbalance in the, in the team. So it's a, it's, a bit, it's a bit affecting us.